Would you feel better about our running back situation if Shady was 27 and Ivory was like 25? Yeah, of course. Yeah, obviously. Okay. Yeah. All right. Because statistically speaking, for the number of years that they played, how many touches they have, <laughs> that is really what their ages are. Now, go ahead. Make sure you hit that bell for more Bills news. Now, Gore is a dinosaur. Right. Yeah. To oh, yeah. Yeah. But I started thinking about it two ways. Number one, the amount of touches that they have. I think Ivory has a total, he's just north of like 1,300 touches in his career. Does Do you, this include pass catching? Yeah. This is the this is the one that I had. Look at all the other guys at what age they were when they hit the numbers that Ivory's at. Let's see. You got LT yeah. was like 24. Yeah. Gurley was 24. Gurley's, Gurley's already where Ivory is. Yeah. You know what I mean? The amount of touches. That they, now, some of those guys are just like south of it. They may have 1,200 or. Yeah, and I think it's important to remember that you can't go back, you know, go back and say, well, you know, what about Thurman's touches? What about. No, um, no, I'm trying. That's why I was trying to find specifically closer to. Right. Well, it, it was a different generation of football back then, so you. You have to kind yeah. of look at you have to kind of look at it differently. Plus, teams want to maximize the number of plays they run in a game. So I would even I would even scale the bet that you're probably offenses are running more plays now than they ever have. Point about it, <coughs> talking about it, because I was looking at the numbers. I was looking at Ivory and I was looking at McCoy and I'm looking at Gore. What's one thing that we've been preaching this entire offseason? It's been protect Allen. And what protects him better than him not running the ball, but right. someone else running the ball? Right. So you got Gore, who's just going to plow ahead. It, you sign him to a one-year deal. Mm. It's not. There's not no big commitment there. You have Ivory for this year as well. Um, what they did last year, around this time, around free agency, they got themselves insurance policies. Right. They signed AJ McCarron, and they they drafted Josh Allen. Mm. They. Um, they signed uh, Kyle Williams to one year, his one year deal, and then they ended up drafting Harrison Phillips. Mm. So what they're doing, they're just giving themselves some insurance to protect themselves from the draft. I, I have no problem with that. Right. Well, and plus you look at the three running backs, and you're one year away from not having any of them. McCoy, Ivory, exactly. and Gore are all are all gone next year. What I just I was I was thinking everyone was kind of losing their mind. Oh, we had, and I even made the joke about it that we got the geriatric backfield. And yeah. I'm like, listen, they're not um, – it, it's not like – Ivory doesn't have a lot of touches for his career. No. McCoy, we we, jo we said about it, by the time he was 29, I think it was like before last year, we were talking about his touches. We're like, he's not – he doesn't have the touches of a normal 29-year-old. He's like 27 in football years. And then Gore, <laughs> you got Gore in there as your insurance policy if one of those two guys ends up getting hurt for some right. reason. And he's – and the other thing about Gore that made me laugh that I thought about, I thought it was a very Patriot move. He just came from Gase's offense. Mm -hmm. If you think the Jets are your biggest threat, why not get Gore? Right. To tell you what Gase likes to do. And I, I want to point out. The, the, the Devin Coleman. <laughs> because yeah. I don't. Wow. It was supposed to be funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, we got people did not like that. I think a lot of people saw the headlines and were kind of new to our channel. Like, I don't know what happened. I don't know what we did to get that video as many views as it got. But the fact still remains. I think people were new to the channel. They didn't get the fact that we were just kind of, we were joking around. When yeah, we were being idiots. Yeah, we were I just mean, joking around. Uh, I mean, that's fine. Let's go back to Frank Gore for a second. Gore is interesting because... He falls a line along the same lines as the Des Bryant video that we released the other day as well. Yeah. You bring in a veteran, nobody's going to touch him. I don't I don't really know if Gore would have gotten looks from any other teams. Just again, because you start getting age concern. I think a lot of teams are looking at Gore as saying, okay, well, let's bring him in. He'll learn the system. If we lose somebody down the road, yeah. right, we can bring him back and everything's gonna be just fine. It's the same reason why the Seahawks signed TO back when they won the Super Bowl. T.O. was on their preseason roster. He was. And then ended up getting cut. And the whole reason was, well, if we run into an injury at the position, 
nobody's going to touch T.O., so let's try and catch lightning in a bottle. We can bring him back, and we know that it's protected. In, it's a protected investment. Um, again, just because nobody was going to touch T.O. that season. No, no, Everybody thought his career was over. You have 37 guys to play with yeah. when the rosters are at 90. You can do you want. Right. Uh, and it's fine. No, nothing is, I mean, that's, that's, that was the one thing that people that were naysayers against. What, what, what Gore? What Gore? You're protecting yourself. You're getting an insurance policy. Plus, he doesn't have to be on your roster. No. Okay, you sign him to a one-year deal. What if you go draft a kid now? What if you don't? You know what I mean? I, I foresee him. I think he's going to be on the roster. <clears throat> but it's still something very interesting to talk about, the fact that right. Ivory doesn't have a lot of touches. No. McCoy, he's only, I think McCoy's only averaged like 16, 17 touches a game in four years in Buffalo. So he doesn't have a lot of trade. Uh, and, he, and he's missed some time. So these guys are still going to be young and fresh. Everyone's going to make the jokes that they're old. But that may galvanize that running back room and be like, listen, all right, you're old? Okay. Well, I'm not immune to the jokes because I absolutely said that Denny's was going to open up their senior discount to the Buffalo Bills running back committee. So I was not. <laughs> After looking at the numbers, though, I'm not as yeah. skeptical as I was I get before. It. I you got get three it. guys now that know how to pick up a blitz. You got three right. guys now that know how to run. You got two out of the three guys are one cut backs. So they're going to hammer it in there if you need to. And... Uh, it's, it still gives you the option to draft a running back. Well, and there's there's some options here. I, I actually had reached out to Dean uh, Kendig because yep. I was curious, because of the guys that the Bills brought in, if they were kind of tipping their hand to what kind of player they were looking for in the draft in the offensive line because they really brought in a lot of guys who were really strong in pass protection. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, listen, is this tipping the Bills' hands that when they're looking for a tackle, they're going to be looking for a strong pass protect tackle? And is that because the Bills are looking to throw the football more? And Dean, Dean came back and said, possibly, but it's easier to teach run blocking than it is pass blocking. I agree with that. Yeah. I, I agree. Why, I completely agree with that. Why statement. do you think Lyman always, like, they always want to run the ball because you're yeah. attacking. You're not getting right. attacked. You're going right. in. Yeah, it's very it's a lot easier. Especially if you have a killer mindset, you'd rather run block anybody. Right. So I, I thought that was a great point, that even though it looks like the Bills are building up, um, you know, all this pass happy, um, all these pass happy acquisitions. Um, the truth is that, that that might not be the direction they're going. Although it looks like that, it looks like they want to throw the football more. I think the Bills are putting themselves in the perfect position to draft draft Bryce Love. The more I the more I read about him, the more I look at what you can find on him, mm -hmm. and the fact that the Bills have visited him more than any other running back tells me a lot. Especially since the Bills are in a position to be able to put a draft investment and a player who was hurt last year. You don't have to have him back right now. You don't have to have that running back tomorrow. We made this mistake last year, though. They went and visited Bryce Love multiple times, right? Yeah. They drafted Tremaine Edmonds. Mm -hmm. Who else did they draft? I know. Wyatt Teller. Wyatt Teller. I know. So, could it be that they're looking for a lineman? Another lineman? It's, it's supposed to be A sneaky possible. lineman in there? Yeah, or they're looking for a defensive player? That they're like, hey, I can never get, rid of, get away from this guy. I suppose Who it's knows? possible. I don't know. But, I love that connection, though. But with the with the the need at the position, yeah, the need to get younger. Let's just rephrase, right? So it's not the necessary. It's not necessarily the need to, um, the need to improve the position because McCoy and Ivory and Gore were are effective NFL running backs. Yes, they're effective. They can get the job done. However, there is a need to get younger at the position because all those guys have no years left on their contract next year. Yeah. So you do have to refresh the position at some point. And Bryce Love is a perfect candidate that the Bills aren't afraid to take guys who lost a season to injury. If they were three-year starters and they lost a season to injury, that doesn't really scare them. So you're telling me that I have three running backs currently, though, that are on, are on contract years? Yeah. That's good. I love it when running backs are on contract years. I love it. They show up. Um, they show up. I love it. Yeah, the thing about it, though, is you're taking so much. This is the thing that I love about the whole thing. And I love I love taking <laughs> I like taking love if, if they end up going that route. That route. However, the um, <laughs> you're taking pressure off of Allen. Yeah. With those three guys. And by having Ivory and McCoy there. All three of them are going to be fresher, right, throughout the year. It's like a defensive line rotation. Yeah, exactly. Right? I mean, you can yeah. rotate those guys in there. I know running backs more than defensive linemen 
you, just like quarterbacks, you gotta get in a rhythm. Exactly. Okay, if you're a rhythm runner, <laughs> McCoy, McCoy, that'll hurt McCoy out of anybody. It will. Because that's what he is. The other two could just, you know, one cut, pound it in there, get you three yards, do what you, do what you need to do, get you those ugly yards that you never see in the stat sheet. Oh, you only had eight carries for 21 yards. Right. Yeah, but like four of those were first downs. Well, and we saw that so, with McCoy last year where there was only one game where he was the he was the guy all game. And he played great because... Ivory he, wasn't in there. Yeah, Ivory wasn't there. <clears throat> and McCoy took what he could get, and he took two, three-yard gains at times, and he didn't have to worry about breaking one off because he, was, he knew he was going to get enough volume. But... Once Ivory came back, you saw McCoy start struggling again. He was because he was trying to make the most out of the few carries he knew he was going to get. Mm. It was a shame. I'm, I'm still I'm still pretty confident the Bills could have had a running back early. But early is the third round nowadays when you start talking about running backs. Mm -hmm. you got to do it before all the compensatory picks come in. Because then they, they just... They dilute the draft they really so do. much. They yeah. really do. So if you get in a fourth round pick from somebody, it's like, whoa, whoa. It's an extra, like, 15 picks later. Yeah, so. right. 